Good morning. Let's begin service. Let's worship God. Sing some songs. Have a great time this morning. Amen. We're here to honor Jesus. There is no problem to be. God cannot solve it. There is no mountain to talk. Ever. 
His love is unchangeable. His love is for eternity. The only thing that changes is God's love is our thoughts about God's love and our attitude towards God's love. That's what changes. But God's love does never change. He is from everlasting to everlasting. God's character never changes. Ever. It stays the same always. God's truth does not change. People change the truth of God. The Bible says that His Word is settled in heaven forever. It is unchangeable. God's ways do not change. The Bible says He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Always the same. He's an unchangeable God. God's purposes do not change. His purpose is to redeem mankind from their sinful ways and to bring them to heaven so He can enjoy their fellowship for eternity. And we can enjoy His fellowship for eternity. God's Son does not change. He says, I am the Lord your God, and I do not change. So why is there so much controversy in the world today about who Jesus is? About what Jesus is about? About the Word of God? Why are there so many different views on what the Word of God says? And how we're to process the Word of God in our lives? It's because people change the Word of God to suit their own purposes, their own character, their own personality, and their own lives and their own walk in God. But the Bible says in Revelations, in the last book of Revelations, anyone that takes this Word and changes it will have every curse that is in the Bible put upon their lives. So it's a very dangerous thing to change the Word of God because it's holy. It was written by the hand of God. And when you change the Word to suit your own purpose, you are saying to yourself that you're wiser than God and you become a God of your own. So it's very dangerous to change God's Word. Amen. E.W. Tozer says again, in the same book I was reading. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, said Moses in the Spirit. From the vanishing point to the vanishing point would be another way to say it. See, the mind looks backwards in time till dim past vanishes and then turns and looks into the future till thought and imagination collapses from exhaustion. God is at both points. And He's unaffected by either one of them. God's not affected by you changing the Word. It doesn't affect Him. Because He doesn't change. He's not affected by your diminishing thoughts or imagination about who He is. That doesn't affect Him at all. The only person that affects is you. The only person that changes is you. It doesn't change God. It doesn't change His perspective. And it doesn't change His love about you. Amen? Amen. I was talking to a person, oh, I don't know, four days ago maybe, maybe longer, about the Lord. And this person says, you know, I've been a hypocrite a long time. But I know that God loves hypocrites. <laughs> and I said, you're completely right. God does love hypocrites because God loves everybody. Everybody. The thing a hypocrite has to do is to decide that they quit, need to quit loving being a hypocrite and turn and love the Lord. Amen? That's why Jesus always came down upon the Pharisees trying to get them to change their mind of the law and turn to Christ. Some did. Nicodemus did. Jesus did. Paul did. Three of them I can think of changed from being a 
Pharisee who followed the law to Christ. Peter was another one, but it took him a long time. He had to be rebuked by Paul before he changed. Amen. But God does not change. The Christian should also know no change with regard to God. There's no change in a Christian's life as regarding to God. How many know that God's promises are still true? They were true back then, they're true today, and they'll be true forever. He does not change, our circumstances change. Rich today, poor tomorrow. How many have been in that situation? Amen. I've been rich, and I've been very poor. I've stood in food lines. I've drove to food banks to get food <coughs> while pastoring in Calgary. That's a big change because I was out of work. So I had to go. So I took two people that went to my church and they had to go. So we all went together. <laughs> we got so much food, I had to make two trips. <laughs> and they lived in the bottom of an apartment. <laughs> So I just passed the groceries through the bottom window of the apartment to them. And when I woke them up to come to church, I climbed through the window and yelled at them, Get up! It's time to go to church! <laughs> oh, okay, Pastor! I'll wait for you in the car. you got ten minutes. <laughs> I'll take Tom come to church. Pioneering is a lot of fun. <laughs> but it was worth it because they served the Lord to love God. How I many know some days we're sick today and we're well tomorrow? Yes. Isn't that true with all of us? Mm -hmm. We're happy today, we're depressed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That happens to all of us, does not? Yeah. We're bummed out one day, we're feeling good the next day. Life changes, but God does not change. Mm -hmm. Our circumstances change. But when our circumstances change, our relationship with Jesus should never change. It should always stay the same. Never change your relationship with the Lord because you're going through a bad time. Because you're married to the Lord. And when you're married to each other, that's a good thing to do too. Don't let your circumstances change your love for each other. Love each other through the circumstances. Well, that's hard, Pastor. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> but you'll learn. Yes. Amen. Because yeah. love covers a multitude of sin. Remember that scripture. Mm -hmm. And because God's love is everlasting and His promises are sure and true, He's a God that never lies because He cannot lie. If he loved me yesterday, he's going to love me today. And if he loved me yesterday and he loves me today, he's going to love me tomorrow. It doesn't matter what I do or who I am. He still loves me. And we have to put that into our mindset. God loves me. It doesn't matter if I'm screaming in a freezer one day or saying nice words to somebody the next day. He still loves me. Because His love is unchangeable. Amen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what life brings. Paul says nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Nothing. Neither heights nor depths. And Paul went through it. Because God's love is unchangeable towards us. Psalms 119.90 it says these words, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. God is faithful to you, to your generation, to the next generation, to the next generation. God is completely faithful. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Psalms 119.91 And they continue this day according to thy ordinances, for they all are all thy Service. So what we need to do as Christians is to be faithful to God 
and continue in his work. That's really hard. Not. Just be faithful to the Lord, love his word, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, all that is in you, and love the word of God. And that will keep you in Christ. It will help you not to change. You know, if you don't know the word of God and you read some book that has different metamorphosis in it and different words and different, the way they sometimes put things in them, a book and they take a scripture and they change the scripture just a little bit. And if you don't know your scripture, that can change your thoughts about Christ. That can change your theory. That can change your attitude. That can change a lot of things in you if you don't check it out. The Bible says we're to search the scripture as the Bereans did. Paul's on Mars Hill speaking to the Bereans, a group of people. And they said to them, well, we're going to go now, but we'll come back and hear more tomorrow. And what they did is they left and they went and searched the scriptures. And it's good if you come to church and take notes and search the scriptures to see if your pastor is telling you the truth. And then if you find something that I'm preaching about doesn't quite line up, please come and talk to me. Because I can be taught. But you're the pastor, you're supposed to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I am a pastor, and I do study a lot, but sometimes I'm just a man. Sometimes men make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's the Lord. Mm -hmm. One preacher said, God cannot change, for all change must be in one of three directions. Now listen closely, because this is a tricky words thing, but if you listen closely, you'll get it. From better to worse, from worse to better, or from one order of being to another. Did you get that? God's perfections rule out all three of these possibilities. Because God, if He will change from better to worse, that means he was never perfect. Or if he changed from worse to better, that means that he was imperfect in the beginning and he's trying to get perfect. Or from one order of being to another, that means he wasn't God because he's trying to be something else. So all of these are imperfect. And they rule out all the possibilities of what God is, and God's perfect. And he does not need to change. It's you and I that need to change. And to bring ourselves under the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are to change from glory to glory into his perfect image. That means we are to take the word of God, apply it to our lives, and let the word of God change us from day to day, from week to week, month to month. Every time we read it here, let it sink into our hearts and let the Word of God change us. Let the Spirit of God that is in you change you by the power of the Word. Amen? Amen. I am fully capable and fully understanding that I cannot change you. Neither do I want to. I love you. But if I tried to change you, you would be changed into what I think you should be. And you'd be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but if I allow God's Word to change you, and you allow God's Word to change you, you'll become what God wants you to be. A child of God. Reaching out for the perfection of the Lord. So the unchangeableness of God is linked to his eternity. Human nature cannot be relied on. Only God can be relied on. He is unchangeable. His nature is always the same. His will is invariable and his purposes are sure. Malachi 3.6, Lord says, 
I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right there God says, I change not. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. It says these words, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times of things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So we've got to remember that the former things of old, the Lord says, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. We have to remember that God's purposes will be done in our lives. What's His purpose? His purpose is that you make heaven your home. Mm -hmm. He called you into His kingdom for two things. Number one, that you be saved and make heaven your home. And number two, that you would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in 1 Peter it says, I've called you out of darkness. How many know you weren't in the light when you came to Christ? I've called you out of darkness into His glorious light, that you may declare the praises of Him who has saved you. There's the purpose. That's why God called you into His life. Light is to declare the praises of God. To tell the world about Jesus. So many ways you can do it. You can go fishing with your buddy who's not saved. Catch a beautiful fish. And go, wow, look at that gorgeous fish God made. And he put it right on your reel. He's blessed you today. There's so many things you can say. You can look up and go, you know, look at that. What do you think of that? And your buddy might go, oh, that's beautiful. What do you think? The firmament of the heavens declare the glory of God. And you can preach the gospel in so many different ways. And so you don't have to tell them all the time. Because they know that. So you don't have to tell them that. What you can tell them is that Jesus loves them. Died for them. To set them free. Free from what? Not free from yourself. You ever done things that you went, why did I do that? That was dumb. I know everyone here in this room speaks to yourself in the car. <laughs> Come on, I do it, we all do it. Yeah. We're going to do that. Boy, am I ever stupid. You know? Those are the words we say to ourselves. Or we go, that jerk. You know? Come right in front of me. We all talk to ourselves. Amen? We can talk to people in so many different ways about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It just astounds you. Just have to take the opportunity. Amen? And recognize the opportunity. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many devices in the man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. See, when we give somebody the word of God, It'll stand in their hearts. The lady that talked about being a hypocrite, and I says, yeah, oh, God does love hypocrites. That will always stay with her for the rest of her life. She'll always remember that. And maybe one day she'll get saved. And say, you know, I have a pastor tell me that he loved hypocrites. I'm so glad, because now I know him. So the counsel of the Lord stands forever in a person's heart. It never leaves. So there's always hope for somebody that you're preaching to and they don't get saved right away. Because God's purpose for our lives do not change. We change them. We are the ones that walk about. We go on a walk about. Because God's calling us. The pressure's too much. So we go on a walk about. Because we don't want to do what God wants us to do. But when you walk towards the Lord. He will establish His plans in your life. 
Philippians 2, 9-11. Wherefore God also has highly exalted and given him a name who is a, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things of earth, things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the glory of God the Father. One day, every single person on the planet is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Because one day he's coming back. Mm -hmm. And every single person will have to stand before him and be accounted with their lives mm -hmm. before God. That's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 6, 13 to 19 says these words, For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Let's go on to 19. Amen. Do you do 19? This speaks about bringing his redeemed people into a full enjoyment of their promised inheritance. It's unchangeable because it's God's promise for your inheritance. It's his character, his purpose for your life to bring you into his inheritance, into heaven. That's your inheritance. You will inherit heaven. You will live with Christ for eternity. In heaven. Mm -hmm. Where heaven's going to be, what heaven's going to be like, we'll have to wait and find out and see. The Bible does speak about heaven. The Bible does say there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. What's going to be in heaven? We'll have to wait and see. But the Bible does speak about things that will be in heaven. But what they're going to look like, what they're going to be, and how they're going to those things are going to look like? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But they're going to be so pleasurable, so wonderful, because they're going to be pure. They're going to be holy. I, I, I've got a wild imagination. But I have a kitty at home. His name is Max, and he's a huge cat. And sometimes I sit there, and I look at my Max, and I go, you know what, Lord? I say this out loud to myself. One day I'm going to sit on a lion. I'm going to put my head on that lion's belly. And I'm going to pet its head. Because everything's going to be pure. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be peaceful. That lion won't want to eat me. Because I'll have a pure body, pure mind. The lion shall lie with the lamb. Can you imagine a lion lying with a lamb instead of chasing after the lamb for supper? Even though he has no to see here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do that land. Amen. It's going to be an amazing place. Heaven's going to be so amazing. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, All flesh is grass, the grass withereth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. That's how I know that when you preach the gospel to somebody, it never leaves them. Because the Bible says it will stand forever. A mortal being can change from something worse to something better, or from something better to something worse. But how many have ever seen that in somebody? Where they're just terrible people and all of a sudden they're nice people. Yes. Or where they're nice people and then they're just terrible people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God can move in neither of these directions, but God can change for the better for that, which means that he had been imperfect before him. So if God can change for the better, that would mean that he had been imperfect beforehand. If we were talking about righteousness, it would mean that he had been less than righteous and therefore sinful. If we were talking about knowledge, it would mean that he had been not known everything and was therefore ignorant. God is the possessor of all knowledge and wisdom, and nothing will change that fact. Holy is holy, and always will be holy. Just is just, and will always be just. God is good, and will always be good. 
God is truth and He will always be truth. That's unchangeable. He can't take something that is good and make it worse, and He can't take something that is worth worse and make it good in Himself. Because He's perfect. He's holy. If He did that, that would mean He's not righteous. That would mean He's not God. God cannot change. Mm -hmm. We change God. We get into circumstance. We get ourselves in life's trials. Mm -hmm. Why, Lord? What have I done here? Why do I deserve this? What did I do to deserve this? It's like God's up in heaven just waiting for you to do something wrong so He can punish you. Mm -hmm. You know, nine and a half billion people on earth, and He's the only one. You're the only one He's looking for, you know? <laughs> just can't wait until He does something wrong so I can punish Him. God's not like that. God is not like that. He doesn't change. His love does not change. Our thinking about God changes. Just remember, when you do something wrong, God still loves you. I want you to have to say these words that Fonzie could never say. What's the word that Fonzie could never say? Come on, everybody. You've watched Happy Days. Sorry. Sorry. And some people can't say that to God. They can't say they're sorry. But that's all it takes. Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Done. Back to normal. You're back to the Lord. All it takes is sorry. Because Jesus says, how many times shall we forgive? And Peter, being the great, you know, theologian that he was, he goes, seven times, Lord? Peter, no, no. Not seven times, but 77 times seven. That means forever. Always forget. Somebody in the church does something wrong and our jaundice eyes, we come back to church because we know they've done something wrong. We can't get in the door because we've got this big beam in the middle of our eye. <laughs> All they have to do is say sorry. Sorry, but Amen. And then we have to say sorry, Lord, too, because we judge them in our eyes. We judge them. And we start playing God. Because that's what judgment is. When you judge somebody for their sin, for what they're doing, you're saying to yourself that you're going to be God and you're going to play God that day. Well, that's not right. Judge not unless you be judged also. So make sure you're not doing the same thing when you judge. And most people, when they judge somebody, they do exactly that. Amen. God's unchangeable. That was all free. That's not even in the sermon. I just said that. I don't know why, but it was for somebody. Mm -hmm. Lastly, the unchangeable truth of God's word, the truth is disturbing to those who are in rebellion against God. When you preach the truth to somebody who says they're a Christian, and they get mad at you, and they begin to malign you, you can know for sure that that person is in rebellion against God. That person wants to be in control. And when a person wants to be in control of their own Christian life, that person is on the spirit of witchcraft. And it's called stubbornness. Because no matter what you say to them, they're not going to change. Because they're right, and God is wrong. That's all there's to it. They're right, the gospel's wrong. That's all there's to it. That's not what I believe. It doesn't matter what you believe. If you don't believe in the truth, which is the gospel, then you're not following the truth. Very simple, very plain. Amen. Because Jesus is only coming back for those who follow the truth. Amen. The counsel of God stands forever in the thoughts of his heart. To all generations. That's in Psalms 33 11. The counsel of God stands forever. The word of God that is implied in your heart stands forever. It does not change because somebody comes along and tries to change it because you're speaking the gospel. You're telling them the truth. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what it says. That's not what the theologian says. I went to Bible school. That's not what they taught us. Well, that's the problem. You went to Bible school. You shouldn't have gone there because they lied to you at Bible school. They don't teach you the truth. Amen? Amen. The best Bible school you can go to 
is this Bible school right here. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ. You pick it up. You read it. If you don't understand what you're reading, you close your eyes and say, God, I don't understand what I'm reading. Can you please open my eyes and my heart and my spirit to what you're trying to teach me in the Word? Amen. That is the greatest teacher in the entire world. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Yes. Who taught the disciples the Word of God. Who preached the gospel to 5,000, 10, 20,000 people in Matthew chapter 5. And who preached and fed them even after he preached to them. That's what we do here. We get we preach. Tonight we're going to preach to you. And then you're going to be fed. So we're going to put on the gospel. It's going to be Matthew 5. You're going to hear the sermon on this little stage. Not the mount. The little stage. And then we're going to feed the 15. <laughs> and we're going to pay out. And have a great time. And that's what fellowship is all about. Amen. Amen. The Lord sets His plans and purposes for your life. And how many know when God sets His plan and purpose for your life, you should always align to that. To have a blessed life. Because if you don't run away from it, you're going to miss out what God wants to do in your life. And you may never know how much God could have used you. You may never know. And that's a tragedy. Because some people God can use tremendously for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that's entirely up to you and how you're going to live your life. For God to use you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts has sworn, Isaiah 14, 24. Ooh, you're quick. <laughs> Saying, surely as I have fought, so shall it come to pass. Surely as I have fought, it shall come to pass, and as I have purposed, so it shall stand. This is the word of the Lord. For you, in your life. What he's thought for you, his purposes he's put forth for you. He's thought about it before he brought it to you. And it shall stand. But it'll only stand if you grab a hold of it and run with it. Amen? When I was in Electrolux, I was started out as a salesman. I wanted more. So I became the assistant salesman to the sales manager. I wanted more. So I learned how to become a manager. But if I never took those steps, I would have just been a salesman. Same thing in the kingdom of God. You come in, you get born again, you're a child of God, you learn the gospel, but there's more for you. There's discipleship. There's learning how to preach. If you want to be a pastor, God's called you to that. If you want to be a preacher of the gospel just on the streets and you don't quite know how, the only way you're going to learn is to do it. A friend of mine, Wayne Kirker from Ontario, used to live in in our house in Chilliwack, when he went to the church in Chilliwack, and uh, I used to say these words to him all the time. He used to say, well, how do we preach to this person? How do we say this to that person? I says, wait, just do it. Because <laughs> if you're going to worry about it, you're never going to do it. So just do it. So he came back and he moved to Surrey, and he says, Dean, I think what I'm going to do is I can get a bunch of t-shirts and put part of our scope BC in the front and put Just Do It on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's a good idea, Wayne. He says, I'm extra large, so you can make that yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, I believe that. If we want to know how to involve our lives in the purposes of God, you just have to do it. Because God is unchanging. He's always with you. He says, Lo and behold, I shall always be with you. Neither will I leave nor forsake you. Everything we do, God is with us. Every person we preach to, God is with us. You've got to remember that. You're not alone when you're preaching to somebody. As soon as you open your mouth, the Lord's there. Because you're releasing the power of Jesus Christ who lives within you. The Spirit of God lives in you. So faith is releasing the Spirit of God. Onto somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
So as soon as you open your mouth and release it, the Spirit of God is speaking. No longer it's you. You know, when I witness to people sometimes, and I, I finish witnessing them, going, and I think about what I said about them, where did I learn how to do that? <laughs> where did those words come from? I didn't know. I had no idea what was going on in that person's life. And I, I, they would say, well, you spoke directly to what was going on in my life. I didn't know. But the Holy Spirit knows. Amen. And if you don't open your mouth, and you don't let the unchangeable God move in your life, how are people going to get saved? If you do not preach. That's in the Bible. And how are you going to preach if you don't open your mouth? Don't wear a mask when you're preaching. You're probably going to hear oh, 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 oh. Amen? That's what I hear sometimes when I go to the stores. Say, oh, I'm going to go, what? How much? And they talk louder, so I move away from the street and go, can you say that again, please? Well, we do have to align our lives up with what's going on. Amen. Until it's over. So praise the Lord. You make your decision what you want to do. And I'm going to make mine. I'm going to be a Christian. And I'm going to trust in Jesus. Amen. 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 For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but yeah. power. And a sound mind. Yeah. Power over everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Spiritual forces in high places. He's given us power over that. Everything. Mm -hmm. So praise God. That's my sermon on the unchangeable God. I hope it helped you. I hope it's encouraged you, strengthened you. Amen. Because that's what I ask God for Him allowed to do. That we can be strong in the Lord and stand. Amen. Amen. Amen.